The following programme may contain adult themes, strong language and some nudity. Listener discretion is advised. The Josh Widdicombe XFM podcast. Live from the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. <laughs> Hello. This one's not on either. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we're going to go without mics tonight. Because why... There we go. Yes. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is... Um, uh, th there's, it's not just me on my own. I'm not just going to get really smashed. Um, uh, so this is a... Uh, the live version of the now dead uh, Josh Willicom XFM show. Um, yeah, four of you are guided. <laughs> the rest of you are going, he did a show on XFM? <laughs> uh, we, did, uh, we did these shows last year uh, in Edinburgh for four nights, and uh, it was brilliant, brilliant fun. Um, so if this is shit, it's, it's genuinely your fault. Because <laughs> it's a really good show. Um, who came last year? Four of you. <laughs> That's a worry. Well, you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, who has... Uh, I mean, this is a genuine... I'm taking my life in my hands here. I, I don't want to ask this, but I will. Who has heard the show? <laughs> Five of you. Well, the way it works is uh, we've got lots of brilliant guest comics. Uh, we've taken your questions, which are the equivalent of... Um, if you text it into a radio station, but obviously you paid for a ticket, so you've paid for the privilege this time. Um, <laughs> If you've uh, done something good, we'll read it out. We'll talk to you about it. Uh, if we don't, we won't be mean to you. So, you know, do speak up if we come to you. Otherwise, we're going to look like a bunch of pricks. <laughs> we up for that? Yeah. You're now shitting yourselves. <laughs> don't worry, it's mainly uh, us talking. And um, it's, it, that makes it look like it's going to be a more boozy affair than it is. <laughs> Bear in mind, this show is six hours. So... <laughs> That's only, you know, two, one pint every three hours. Um, are we ready to uh, meet the uh, brilliant comedians uh, that are on the show? <laughs> Good. Um, ooh, just one person went with a clap. <laughs> and they were correct. Uh, so we'll, 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 uh, we'll announce them uh, from left to right. Uh, for, uh, first up, uh, Nish Kumar. <laughs> Matthew Crosby. <laughs> Nathaniel Metcalf. Ivo Graham, James A. Castor, John Robbins, uh, producer Neil, and also uh, in a in a break from radio uh, etiquette, uh, drawing uh, the show tonight, Tom Neenan, who, uh, who will be uh, throughout the show will be uh, drawing it um, now. Uh, yes, there's loads of us. I'm excited. Uh, are, you, are you excited, guys? Yeah. yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. Absolutely excited, stoked. Yeah. Absolutely stoked. Um, how was your journey up, Neil? Uh, I got the sleeper train, which was... Has anyone got the sleeper train before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's like a coffin on wheels. Um, <laughs> but I shared a bunk with a total stranger who thought it was acceptable to eat a Cornish pasty at 5am. <laughs> also, a coffin on wheels is a hearse. <laughs> 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 Don't start, Ivo. <laughs> that prick walked out of my show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Another classic scrape. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, yesterday. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you, did you, did oh you know James was on the bill tonight? You didn't, did you, presumably? No, 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 of course you didn't. No. Well, there are the stairs, mate. Off you go. <laughs> This is like the Brad Pitt episode of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Why, why did you walk out? No, don't... Uh, don't please, uh, do not ask that <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, oh, no. you that? Oh. He's a reviewer for Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's one of the wireless microphones? We can go to, go no, to no, the, let's uh, not that. give him a voice. <laughs> <laughs> shall, we, shall we move on? And, or, and It's a bit of a gamble. Do we, do we ask the man? Just keep this awkwardness in the room. <clears throat> yeah. James. I think everyone's all because we all thought it was pretty funny, didn't we? Okay, okay, funny. okay. Uh, why did you walk out? Needed a wee. Ah, oh, wee. Didn't get back in, though, did you? <laughs> did, they, did they not let you back in? Because I, I said it was only five minutes left. Because that, that's what happened, isn't it? You, he walked out. I said, why are you leaving? He said, I'm going for a wee. 
I said, there's only five minutes left. And he went, that's fine. And then I never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> he Mate. was clearly doing a poo. Yeah. <laughs> the five minutes you missed was me basically ripping the piss out of you to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically that. Sorry, James. Some people don't like your callbacks as much as the panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't like it enough. <laughs> Um, when I came this to see this has got show. very niche, very early yeah. doors. When I oh, came here to I am. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. When I went to see a Caster show last week, um, a man walked out, but he went the wrong way. Yeah. And he got trapped backstage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to do There's the next show, options. didn't he? He'd do an hour <laughs> after you. There's two options. There's the way out to the toilets and stuff, which you picked. And there's a way that just leads to a corridor and a lift, and that's it. And the lift doesn't go anywhere. Um, so that man went there, and then he hung out there for about 10 minutes. Yeah. And then just we saw him again going, I can't get out, I really need to go. To <laughs> I really need a piss. He, um, he, he didn't have the guts to cross the stage. He was just going to stay there till the end. Yeah, I'm a very, uh, to most people, I'm quite an imposing figure, but some people don't give a shit. And just, um... <laughs> <laughs> right, um, on with the show. Now, um, we, as you um, have seen, we have... Uh, Three topics for your discussion. Um, how, how are they looking, Neil? Uh, bleak. <laughs> okay. No, no, there's some this good, good, good interaction. Tales of your first kiss, open brackets or further, dot, 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 closed brackets. <laughs> Any, uh, and uh, stories of things falling on you. Plus, have you met the Ting Tings? <laughs> uh, which, uh, w which was something we put on the radio show one week, not thinking it would be a thing that people reply to and turned out to be our most popular topic ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it's the, it's the most downloaded podcast the show has ever had. That's <laughs> when we kicked that off. Yeah. How many accounts do the Ting Tings have? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to tell whether it's her account because you don't know if it's her name, do you? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Lovely bit of business there, yes. Ernie Dawes. Uh, if you didn't enjoy that, you may as well walk out now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of level we'll be giving you. Um, so, uh, we, well, we'll throw them open to the uh, to the guests first. Um, tales of your first kiss, open brackets or further dot dot or close brackets, or stories of things falling on you. Well, I, I had something fall on me uh, this week. In, in fact, I'm very proud of this. Right, I was backstage at the uh, the BBC tent in Potter Row, and there were two men. It was like a '70s sitcom. There were two men. Uh, transporting a piano on a dolly, <laughs> right? And it fell off the dolly, and I caught it, <laughs> right, with both hands. What's a, sorry, what's a dolly? Uh, it's like, a, like a, a, a trolley with wheels on it. Oh, yeah, OK. Uh, you caught the piano? I caught the piano, both hands. I, caught, I, I just saw it topple, and I caught it, and uh, Rory Bremner was there. <laughs> Crosby, this sounds like one of your cheese dreams. Yes. <laughs> In fact, now I think about it, it did. No, no, no. Uh, Rory Bremner was there, and he said, Matthew, that was very quick. And so I've got on my poster now, very quick Rory Bremner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but who's, but who's wait, who did he say, say it as? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said it as Des Lynam, and it was a real cheer. <laughs> also, I'm, I'm sorry this is becoming my role on the show so early, but a trolley already has wheels. <laughs> Just so many facts. Yes, to you are. Early You're absolutely right. All right, it's, it's the sort of thing that uh, like a, me a mechanic would would lay on to go under a car, a mattress. Oh yeah. No, yeah. Well, you know, you know what? Mattress. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, a, a bit of a bit of wood with wheels on that you'd use to, because uh, obviously I tweeted it uh, this this incident, but I then had to uh, Google thing with wheels that you use to transport <laughs> piano, <laughs> and the word dolly came up. You also so. had to Google Rory Bremner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, now, uh, has anyone else... Uh, Said, see John Culshaw. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else uh, with things falling on you or tales of your first kiss, stroke or further? Still hoping. <laughs> well, we can drop something on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Tom Neenan? The uh, a cinema Thanks, sign mate. for the Scorpion King. The O from that fell on me, uh, leaving it as the Scorpion King. <laughs> What? A letter fell from the cinema sign? Yeah, yeah. Greenwich Hitting cinema. you on the head? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had you seen the film? No, that's, I mean, insult to injury. I, I never wanted to. <laughs> what had you gone to see? Uh, what would have been that time? I can't remember what year it was. Not the Scorpion. Did you go to one film a year? <laughs> 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 You're really taking that if you only see one film this year. <laughs> Very seriously. <laughs> It, w it would never have been the Scorpion King. <laughs> it would never have been the Scorpion King. Uh, so so um, e each person um, has uh, be been on the show, and um, the reason um, these have all been regulars at some point, um, and they've all had a um, 
particular... This uh, is the best intro I've ever heard, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> oh, well, it's because I realised that uh, my list with what we're doing had gone off on the uh, lap. I'm still making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so each... Oh, should we have a couple of the... Oh, I don't know where I am. Um, should we have a couple of uh, audience ones? Yeah, if you want. Um, da -da -da. Where is Graham? Graham Rees, where are you, Graham? Graham, here? Uh, there, yep. It's take time, guys. I know we're late, but... <laughs> no, can't read it out now. Uh, so Graham said, uh, stories of things falling on you. You were uh, delivering the morning paper and a squirrel fell out of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, o on you? Yeah, um, I, it was the morning paper. Had to be delivered by 7 a.m. Well, it was still dark and spooky, at least when you're 11. And I'm walk walking up a customer's um, front walkway, and I hear this crack above me, and the next thing I've got is a terrified squirrel and running out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by a terrified paper boy never going up their front walk again, coming the sideway around the drive from then on. Wow. wow. Your accent's amazing. I'm, yeah, you sound I've like an NPR podcast. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I've narrowed it down to about three different continents. <laughs> yeah. well, walkway you... and sidewalk is a clue. Uh -huh. well, okay, so we come from somewhere where they don't know the names of things. <laughs> That doesn't help me geographically, though. He might oh. just be mentally ill. <laughs> if I said loyalist colonies, would that help? No, no that would not help. Are you from Canada? Yes. Where are you from in Canada? Toronto. Oh. Where the squirrels fall, fall from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Where the squirrels are all very depressed. To, to, to be what, fair, what, as far as I know, only... One of the with, um, with the subject stories of things falling on you is... It's very difficult when you've given the person for them to elaborate. Because essentially they go, yeah, the squirrel fell on me. Yeah. <laughs> have, we, have we got any more, Neil? Uh, Bruce Bryden. Where, where's Bruce? 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 Uh, I like Bruce? the fact that the audience have microphones because it makes me feel like Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> where's Bruce? Well, we read it out and we'll see whether we want to find him. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Ross once sat on me at a service station. <laughs> <laughs> where is Bruce? And Bruce, where are you, Bruce? Bruce, you are Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, come on. Come on, Bruce. He's, he's trapped under Jonathan Ross at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> is is that story, that's not tale of his first kiss, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Bruce. Where Bruce? are you, Bruce? Don't be Has shy. Has he walked past? He's done he's, a drive-by on us. He honest. wasn't coming what? to the show. He walked past the queue. Someone gave him that. He filled it in. <laughs> <laughs> carried on walking. <laughs> his other answers are, also, are, are fine as well. Plus, have you met the Ting Tings? Never. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> and then tells you your first kiss, just one word. K9. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Brucey? Come on! <laughs> I can't believe he's not here. It's, made, it's a made-up name. Is it? No, he's... Bruce Bryden. That's made up. It's Double made B. Up. He's also, a real that's man. a very no hard one name for Jonathan Ross to say. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Uh, let's have giving up on Bruce. Yeah, we're giving up on Bruce. Let's have another thing, a story. Uh, so, Ker just Kirsty, that really doesn't help. You need to know a surname. Have we got more than one Kirsty in the house? Well, she'll recognise it from the story, <laughs> unless they've had identical first Very kisses. Very nice to hear you say in the house, Neil, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to hear that. Well, white it's, middle very, class. it's very rare that in yeah. the house is preceded by, have we got any more than one Kirsty? <laughs> <laughs> what about Kirsty in the Jesus? <laughs> if your name be Kirsty, throw your hands in the air. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, any stories of things falling on you. Kirsty's mum shut the car boot on her head. Oh, oh Kirsty. Son of a Kirsty? Kirsty? Oh, yeah, there she is. Oh, she's still got the ability to raise her hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neil's open dark today. <laughs> this isn't the last leg. Um, <laughs> what, 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 what's, what's, what happened, Kirsty? My mum was unpacking the shopping and she had a big people carrier and she didn't realise that I was kind of, my head was in the people carrier. And as I put my head out, she shut the boot and slammed it on my head. Oh. oh. But have Why you ever you kissed a dog? Because <laughs> <laughs> Bruce no. says. <laughs> so wait, your, your head, can I, cause I, I'm oh. not working this out properly. You, you, so you were entirely in or, your, or just your I, head like was in my, there? Most of my body was in, but she was, I don't know, she wasn't paying attention and she just slammed the door as my head Most was Most of your body up. was in, what? Were you, so what were you doing in the boot of the car? <laughs> <laughs> it was a big people carrier, so like I had to reach in to get stuff because there were, it was a huge boot. This is a oh. humble brag of a story. Our car boot's pretty large. She, was, she turned <laughs> up hoping it was tales of your <laughs> Renault Espace. <laughs> 
Now, uh, I did try this link earlier and it failed, but I'm going to do it. Um, each person has a different feature on the show. We'll be going uh, through uh, each of them throughout the evening uh, between coming back to you guys. We'll start uh, with Matthew Crosby, who uh, for about six months on the show was our correspondent who uh, reviewed uh, celebrity autobiographies. That's right. I love, uh, I love reading celebrity autobiographies. Uh, my favourite uh, uh, regular fans of the show will know is uh, Shane Ritchie's autobiography, which is called Rags to Ritchie. <laughs> very strong, very strong. But today I'm going to be reading from uh, the Crankies. <laughs> Seeing as we're in Scotland, the Crankies, Fan Dabby Dozy, are amazing true story. And it is amazing because they love boffing. Um, <laughs> boffing or buffing? A uh, bit of both. <laughs> if it's a good night, there's boffing first, buffing later, then a bit more boffing. Um, I. What does boffing mean? Uh, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'll tell you when you're older, Ivo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. I, Ivo, Ivo left the uh, tales of your first kiss blank, didn't you? <laughs> oh. In my school, boffing just meant prepping really well for your exams. <laughs> <laughs> Getting an early night. <laughs> um, I'm going to start very, very quickly uh, to, with, with uh, a story of... They hated Paul Daniels, <laughs> which is a great start. <laughs> Should I just t talk, talk about when I saw Paul Daniels in... Uh, Edinburgh. For, did anyone go and see Paul Daniels when he was here four years ago? No. Yeah. Did he do the following two bits of material, which have stuck with me? Um, <laughs> Is this the one about the video with Debbie in it? No. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we got into incredibly libelous territory last year when I tried to read from Stop. Cliff Richards. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All I'll say is one of the podcasts from last year is a lot shorter than the other ones. <laughs> Um, so now, now you're going to hear uh, Josh Whittacombe does Paul Daniels' material, <laughs> which you can also see on his, uh, his upcoming tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, see if it works. Um, it, it, was just, uh, it was just after the riots, and he, said, he made a reference to the riots. And then as an aside, he turned to the front row and went, I'd bring back corporal punishment. <laughs> I mean, material's a strong word for that, isn't it? <laughs> but another one was... But the uh, funny thing about that is... He, do, he, he means capital punishment, doesn't he? No, I think he meant corporal punishment. What, like caning beating. rioters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Putting them in the stocks. So it's Dickensian. <laughs> he wouldn't uh, chop off their hands, he'd chop them in half. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, yo! The, uh, the, other, uh, the other point, this was astonishing. Um, it didn't get much on the night, and it's not going to get much now, but um, he got someone to hold up a white hanky he said, uh, hold up the white hanky, or as I call it, the Iraqi flag. Oh. At last, someone well, is taking yeah. down the mighty Iraqis. <laughs> <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> he, he, um, some friends of mine did a gig with him. Uh, um, in in stand-up, if you have a bad gig... Can I just say, I'm loving my section, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guys, seriously, you know, I've, I've talked way too much. <laughs> Let me take a breather. <laughs> On Neil's computer, it just says Crosby tease up the lads. <laughs> <laughs> that is the first time in history this configuration of people has been referred to as the lads. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Acaster. Sorry, mate. Okay. I mean, I, I have uh, yeah, I've, I've, a Go lot on. of build up now. <laughs> that guy's already Watch starting to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got one person against me? He's warming up his leaving legs. <laughs> <laughs> He's already had half a pint. How much can you hold? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, some friends of mine did a gig with Paul Daniels in Edinburgh when he was that same year. And normally, if you have a bad gig as a stand-up and come off, the other stand-ups will be quite nice to you or say, like, you know, the crowd was rubbish or whatever. <laughs> and they had a really bad gig and they came off and <laughs> Paul Daniels has never met them before. Uh, turned to them and went, that was crap. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Not, not, a <laughs> not a lot. I'm still reeling from the information that Josh went to see Paul Daniels after the riots, as if that's what you thought, well, that's the best thing to do. That's the only way I can feel whole again. I wasn't in response. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't turn on the news and go, well, if I don't go and see Paul Daniels, they've won. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Crosby. So this is a bit about uh, Paul Daniels. They were, uh, the Crankies are working in Jersey. Uh, Paul I Daniels met Paul been Daniels there. once. Amazing <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Come on, mate. Again, a nice, a nice bit of business. But uh, Paul Daniels had been there for the whole summer. I'd never come across him before, but knew of him. He'd been supporting an Irish comic, Bal Moan. But when we arrived, Bal had left. So we were now top of the bill for the first time. Something I think Paul resented. <laughs> Paul was a super act, but personally, he was such a bore. <laughs> We were all living in the same hotel, and he'd have a trick in every pocket. We'd be sitting in the bar, having a conversation with some guest or one of the other acts, and he'd butt in doing some bloody card trick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Jeanette speaking at the moment, by the way. This is Jeanette. Um, uh, after a month, we were sick and tired of him, and our patience had just about run out. One night, he came over to our table and butted into our conversation as usual. That's what Ian told him to piss off. Ian carries on with the story. I was so annoyed after a month of being constantly pestered. All he's doing is magic tricks at you guys. Uh, by uh, being constantly pestered by him that something just snapped and I swung for him. Oh. I didn't hit him that badly, but he still went flying off the bar stool <laughs> onto his ass. I had simply cracked. But amazingly, a punch in the gob had no effect whatsoever on Paul. I would actually play golf with him after that incident. He was still the same pesky wee man, doing tricks at every turn as if nothing had happened. But to give the man credit, at the end of that run, he bought Jeanette and I a going away present. So I take my hat off to him. He may have been a pain, but he's also a gentleman. So they like him. Uh, Do we never find out what the present was? We don't know that? what the present was. Uh, a never ended load of handkerchiefs. I guess. <laughs> This, um, is this is, again, this would be libelous were it not coming from uh, the, the mouths of babes, or at least uh, a woman dressed as a schoolboy. <laughs> um, this is from chapter 10, uh, Ding Dong. And Ding Dong is their phrase for fucking. Um, okay, so Jeanette says... James has now walked out of his own gig. Oh, God. <laughs> Where's A. Castigar? You got inside his head, mate. <laughs> you Where's started it, I toilet? finished him off. I feel terrible. Where's A. Castor gone? He's actually quite good friends with the Crankies, mate. Um, oh, is he? <laughs> That's how he met Paul Daniels. Yeah. And I just think you probably should have cleared it with him. I, I didn't realise. He actually had a threesome with them once, and I think he's worried this chap oh, yes. about that. <laughs> Imagine how much taller he is than Jeanette. <laughs> that I would think look you've also incredible. His classic scrape. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got off stage guys. to get his present. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is Ding Dong. Jeanette starts. Showbiz is a notorious graveyard for marriages, and people are always curious about how we manage to stick together. Every interviewer on every chat show always tries to ask about our relationship. Jonathan Ross, on his BBC TV panel show, sat on me. No, he didn't. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Ross, on his BBC t TV panel show, It's Only TV But We Like It, in 2002, was typically straightforward when he asked, So, Jeanette, do you dress up as Wee Jimmy for Ian in the bedroom? I'd heard that one a million times, and I just replied, oh, no, Jonathan, Ian prefers me to dress as Harry Potter. <laughs> but guys, now in our 2002, book... that was a very current reference that back was, then. <laughs> it's a good bit of business then. Uh, but now in our book, we feel it's right to clear up all the myths and rumours. The truth is, we have always been together as a married couple, but that didn't stop us having fun with other people. Dot, dot, dot. We like to have Three fun... Three women called Dot. <laughs> <laughs> It was June Brown for EastEnders with the first, yeah. Three times. No wonder she looks like... We like to have fun. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow is right, mate. We like to have fun, especially at these wild parties. And we sort of knew what each other was doing with, and with whom. But we always ended up back in our own hotel suite or in the house together at the end of the night. There was never anything very serious. But it's fair to say the crankies were not as pure as the driven snow. Ian says, it was never involved lovey-dovey stuff with the, other, with the others. We never had flings as such. It was just these incredible parties that would get out of hand. Jeanette might ask someone, where's Ian? And they would happily tell her I was in the room next door with a dancer with my trousers around my ankles. <laughs> Jeanette says, no one took it seriously. It was all good fun. Ian responds, good, filthy fun. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was up to no good at these parties, and we were no different. Jeanette says, to give you an idea of what we got up to, one time we went to this party, and Ian put some cottage cheese from the buffet. What a party. Um, <laughs> he put some cottage cheese from the buffet on the end of his willy and sandwiched it with two cream crackers, then proudly announced to everyone, look, I'm fucking crackers. <laughs> After Nottingham, we went on tour with a show called The Palm Beach Review, and I remember once, this is Ian again, running around in the buff wearing nothing but an eggshell on my willy. As I said, I was always stripping off. 
Jeanette said, one of the guys in the show was a magician called Eric Z, who looked like Liberace with a big bouffant hairstyle. He had a real leopard called Scorpio as part of his act. He also had an assistant called Angie and a leopard tamer called Rocky. So Ian had a little ding-dong, as we called it, with Angie, and I had a little ding-dong with the leopard tamer, Rocky. I used to say to Ian, you've been with Angie again because you have glitter on your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Ian carries on the story, and I'd say, you smell of cat's piss. <laughs> so I know you've been with Rocky, but there was never any real jealousy between us. If any jealousy started to creep in, then it had to stop. We both made sure of that. Can that I just say, I can't cost. wait to see Tom's picture of that story. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a second. When I went to the toilet, you were reading the crankies. Have you moved on to Russell Brand? <laughs> <laughs> It's, you should see the photos in the middle. They are X-rated. But they, they were a kid's, like, entertainment act. Yeah, but behind the scenes, they're allowed to do what they like. But right? who is the market for this book? Well, me. It would, yeah. Oh. <laughs> An adult who looks like a child. <laughs> <laughs> now, John Robbins, you, uh, you actually host your own X of M show. Uh, yeah, with, still uh, do, still do. Putting yes. in the miles, putting in the miles. <laughs> Does um, anyone I, listen to it at all? Oh, More than mine! <laughs> I've, got, I've lived. Anyway, um, y yours well, isn't on anymore. Oh, oh. <laughs> Stick says, the says the man. Uh, I, I'm not, not going to go there <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say there. Um, now, now uh, John, uh, you, you uh, for your own show, have written your own celebrity autobiography, haven't you? Yes. So th this takes a bit of backstory. We read. Let's, uh, we'll leave it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll, 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 I'll be no, quick. No, no, no. So oh, we fine. read Tony Blackburn's autobiography out, actually not knowing that Matt yeah. read out biographies on your shows. Do you not listen to Josh's show? I listen to the first one just to see what we can improve. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I do... And I then did. Tom Crane's podcast combines the best bits of both. <laughs> <laughs> That's a too niche a reference. <laughs> Here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, for, great for people at home, uh, you're listening on the podcast, Nish's eyebrows were out of control during that. <laughs> and for people who are listening at home, my name is Nish. <laughs> and, uh, and mine is Matthew. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> John. That John. is a broader question that we could ask about this entire show. <laughs> John. So I, I wrote my own autobiography after we'd kind of read all the chapters of Blackburns, and it's sort of in the style of quite a self-aggrandizing person, which suited me fine. I went to it like a duck to water. <laughs> and, um, but it's sort of also, Tony Blackburn's autobiography was a reference point for I, Partridge, and s some storylines are almost lifted verbatim in I, Partridge. There's a bit where Tony Blackburn gets told to reduce the nasality of his voice. <laughs> uh, in Partridge, that's by Des Linem. Um, in Blackburn, it was just by his agent. I've not got high hopes for this, Josh. <laughs> um, so it's called The Robins Amongst the Pigeons. And uh, this is the first chapter. It's called Openings. I was born in Southmead Hospital on the 4th of May, 1982. Every year on my birthday, cries of May the 4th be with you have rung out across the land. It always gladdens me, but I have never seen Star Wars and don't intend to, as I'm not a 50-year-old man who collects unopened toys. <laughs> Following my birth, I was whisked away from the unsightly suburb of Southmead to the Britain in Bloom award-winning market town of Thornbury. Previous residents had included Henry VIII and Princess Diana, and as a two-day-old, I'm sure I would have felt it fitting for me to follow in their footsteps, but stopping short of the terrible syphilis and bad continental driving that did for them both, <laughs> respectively. <laughs> Due to a mixture of good parenting and unwillingness to mix with the more violent elements of Bristolian pupils at the Castle School, a tabletop incomprehensive, I've never had a Bristolian accent, though I can impersonate three separate Bristolian accents accurately, the second of which has been labelled superb by three separate publications, one of which is not web-based. <laughs> LAUGHTER I wouldn't say I was the brightest pupil in my class, but my teachers did. Frequently, and as a child, they outranked me in their ability to judge academic excellence. So I guess it's a label that will have to stick. <laughs> to this day, I've never set much stall by awards and would rather not go into detail about my early successes. 
Suffice to say, 247 commendations speak for themselves. <laughs> Given for exceptional work in a lesson, 10 commendations could be exchanged for a head of year's commendation. Three of these could be exchanged for a head teacher's commendation. Though I amassed 247 commendations, equating to 24.7 head of year gongs, and 8.23 recurring head teacher's awards, <laughs> It is a record that still stands to this day. <laughs> I expected no special treatment, save preference in selection for ex extracurricular activities such as the school magazine and student committee elections. The Castle School in Thornbury nurtured my interest in all fields, and in the case of humanities lessons, some actual fields. <laughs> I'm proud to say that as of 2014, only three teachers I was associated with have been arrested for sexual activity with pupils. <laughs> Out of a batch of around 60, that's not half bad, and I assume well below the national average. But it wasn't all awards, commendations, and paedophile dodging. <laughs> Trouble was just around the corner. Ooh. Solid. Thanks. <laughs> is that, is that, we carry, is that I could do another one. Uh, what, what time are we at? Yeah, go on. Fuck yes. it. It's a good way to end the chapter, isn't it? You're very clever. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Because you end it like that, and it, I instantly want to keep on reading. And I'm not even going to read the next chapter. I'm what? skipping to six. Yeah. Although the next chapter is called Fucking Crackers. Yeah. So I'm quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do, we, 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 uh, time wise, we'll do the next chapter tomorrow. I, okay. It's interesting that ACAST have learnt that, um, how, you know, to keep people interested. Because maybe if you, you know. Yeah. If you had a few if more clips like that. <laughs> well, to be fair, he didn't stay until the end. James normally ends his show by going, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Now, uh, Ivo, uh, you, uh, what was your role on the show? Um, <laughs> a question often asked. <laughs> General, uh, you know, at atmosphere. You, g you get bullied a lot from what I hear. Quite yeah, but it's quite class right war, too. really. But that's fine. Uh, well, um, it? <laughs> it's a lovely bit of fun, and that's fine, because I'm more honest about, you know, how much I'm indebted to XFM than the rest of the guys, yeah. and they think they're big shots just because they're riding on the same coattails that I am. That's absolutely fine. Should <laughs> um, we tell them about Sorry. the time you didn't know what, s si what end of the train was the front? No. Nope. Yeah. Ideally, we'll leave that anecdote forever. <laughs> 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 Let's hear it, James. Funny, though, Ivo didn't. Uh, Ivo, I was meant to be meeting Ivo to go to a gig together. He was uh, comparing, and I was on. And uh, I thought I was you were going to go, and I was headlining. So, uh, <laughs> I was he, he was, I was headlining, to be fair. <laughs> he, was, he was headlining. He did a great well, job. I was, I, was, I was on last at a really bad gig. Royal uh, Holloway University. What a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> um, I think that's their slogan, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not even in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your school slogan, wasn't it, I Shh. <laughs> what was your school slogan? Uh, Floriata Tona. Um, what was that translator? Let Eaton flourish. What school did you that go to? That killed the room. <laughs> 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 that would be so funny if he'd just gone to a comp. <laughs> that were just really fans of Eaton. <laughs> Everyone should aspire to it. <laughs> We'll do what we do, but Eaton's going to flourish. <laughs> it's going to flourish. Uh, so, so, James, tell the... the I was waiting in uh, Waterloo train station for Ivo, and he was late. But I um, made the train. I did make the train. Ivo made the train without telling me. So what happened was, I was in the place where we had agreed to meet. Ivo was late. And then when I said, well, I texted him going, are you going to be here soon? He said, yeah, I'm on the train, mm. instead of the place we were supposed to meet. And then he left without me. I don't think... I think... I Guys, that's what happened. All trains have wheels. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. It was, it was, but uh, Ivo texted me and said, I've got off at the next stop. I'll get on your train when you get to that next stop. That's fine. Excellent, excellent planning. Got on the train. I texted him saying, I'm in the back carriage. Mm. Get this, to the next stop. Where, this is where I make my blunder. <laughs> Get to the next stop. I don't see Ivo get on my carriage. Move away again. I say, Ivo, did you, have you missed the train again? He said, no, no, I'm on the train. I said, are you in the back carriage? He went, no. I wasn't sure which carriage was the back carriage. <laughs> Eaton said, will flourish. <laughs> <laughs> We just say meet in first class. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
hopefully I'm playing up to a stereotype there that's been created for me. I very rarely travel first class. But yeah, you said you didn't know what end the, the flood was. It was confusing. It was confusing. <laughs> I suggested it was the end that the train leads with. Like the, the, when you were at the station and it came in, it was that's the bit that came I mean, in that, first. That's, but that's the problem with this, that the word front is so obvious to what it means that it's hard to explain it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. It's the bit that it goes forwards with. It's, yeah. the, it's, the, it's no. the front, mate. It's the, the front. Do, do I tell them? Do, do, I, do you remember what your um, wallpaper on your phone was at that point? No, I don't. It was. I'm not making it. It was Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> <laughs> Which I suggested you liked him because you know what M was the front because his face was on it. <laughs> I, vote, I was like, if you said meet at the face, I would have known what we were talking about here. <laughs> right now, I, I vote roll on the show uh, each week. Oh, uh, I'd much rather just talk about Thomas the Tank Engine than do the <laughs> feature. <laughs> No, we, well, you, we, say you, you say phone uh, background, I say university duvet um, <laughs> for a whole year. Um, really? Yeah, but well, we, haven't got, we haven't got time for that, to pick the bones out of that one. Um, now, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. Now, um, uh, so e each week, uh, not only were we guest on the show, Ivo, but we ended up playing this game that was suggested by a listener whose name, Neil? I don't keep record. No, we forget. Yeah. And... Um, I really feel like since the show ended, you two have just given up. <laughs> since it ended? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not hear the last three months? <laughs> the definition of D-mob happy, it really was. <laughs> uh, now, uh, e each week, uh, we'd play a game that was suggested by a listener, which was the greatest game I've ever played. Better, than, fo better than football. Mm, um, which was uh, Wiki Races, yes. uh, which was where you get two different Wikipedia pages, and you have to get from one to the other in as few as blue yes. links as possible. You have to stay in Wikipedia, though. You have to stay in Wikipedia. Tom Allen exited and uh, toured the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Ivo, uh, today uh, we thought we'd play, you could play Wiki Whip Races yes, against a member of the audience. What an honour. Um, and uh, if they beat you, they will win a prize, which is, Neil? Tickets to see Ivo. Mm. Debatable prize there. Feel the <laughs> excitement in the room. Yeah, don't all raise your hands at once. Yeah. Now, That's uh, also the, the sort of last fling of the dice for someone who's ever resort going, well, I'll tell you what, I'll check the surprise. Take it to my show. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're in the courtyard <laughs> from 2pm uh, going, who wants to play me at Wiki Races? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no, I've lost again. Here, come to my show. No, set... <laughs> I know, that's fine. You've added... Set sales are fine. Yeah. Yeah, people good, people come in and they stay till the end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah. So uh, would uh, would anyone like to volunteer their chance to win sixty four tickets to see Ivo? <laughs> <laughs> Two tickets to see Ivo Graham. Hands up if you want to take him on. You have to have um, a no mobile. One. With Could it be old? Them. What about old uh, Leaving Legs McGee? How long are you in Edinburgh, Leaving Legs? I How don't long want are him you here. About fifty five minutes usually. <laughs> 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 Basically, basically, has anyone got an hour to kill tomorrow? <laughs> mm. uh, who's available at six tomorrow? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. One yeah, man up there. One uh, here. What's your name? James. James. Have you seen Ivo's show? Uh, not yet. Oh, and are you well, That is confident, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Ivo's show? Not I think yet, that, that goes down as fighting down, talk. <laughs> which was a part of the problem with XFM. But um, no. <laughs> <laughs> In joke. Um, so, uh, James, uh, would, you like to see I would you like to take on Ivo? Uh, would it, we have a round of applause while James comes to the stage. <laughs> Bring your phone, James. Bring your phone. Have you yeah. got your phone? No one was phone, expecting James. James to take this long. James, James, James just, just milk it. Yeah, it's fine. The, the applause has stopped, and now you're going back to your yeah. seat. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of people have had enough. They've pulled an Acaster. Bye. Okay, now James. Is uh, anyone checking? You can get a phone signal in here. Yep. Yeah. We've got, we've got Wi-Fi. Now, James, if you just sit down here, uh, you are going to oh. just sit there. Um, it's fine. Um, we don't need to hear from you. Now, and, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, J James, uh, w where are you from? Uh, Manchester. Yeah, you actually. Yeah. And, um, um, I was the, um, the guy that tweeted you that I was stuck at uh, Vienna train station because I listened to your last ever Oh, show. thank you very that much. That is a humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> Trapped the train Vienna. Now, James, what what will we be going from and to, Neil? I know we only discussed it a couple of hours ago, but I forgot. It, we are going from Lady Sovereign, mm -hmm. the uh, rapper, oh yeah, and 
TV personality. TV per and <laughs> Sage. Yeah. And, um, and uh, we are going to comedian Matthew Crosby. Oh. I actually own Lady Sovereign's album. I was always happy to make way for the SOV. I'd be surprised if it's on her Wikipedia, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly. Lady Sovereign's page. My, my, it really is on mine. That's the worst thing. <laughs> Uh, so little now it takes Can a while, so we'll why, why to it while we continue topics. with the show. Um, so I go, yeah. So why, did, why, did these top, why did you choose these topics? Uh, because Matthew Crosby's on this show. Hello. And, uh, and Lady Sovereign is our special guest. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> and no one remembers Lady Sovereign. Right, back to audience interaction. How Neil. long does it, do they just take as long as they need to? They just make as few clicks as possible and then we'll look at the result at the end. Oh, lovely. Can I also I just say that Tom Neenan is a massive fan of Lady Sovereign? Because he has the worst taste in music of all time. Tom, can you please tell everyone what your favourite song is and the artist is by? Yeah. It's uh, Get What You Give by the New Radicals. <laughs> Unacceptable! Uh, uh. That's a huge tune. It's a huge tune. Right. I'm with, I'm with um, you, for those of you who don't know playlist. Tom as well, uh, Tom also believes that he could muddle through to the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to explain that theory for... Yeah, I don't play tennis. I never have. But I think I, think I could muddle through. <laughs> <laughs> How would that work? I'd enter as a wild card. Yeah, obviously. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they give Brits, a, Brits get a lot of wild cards, so you might get in. Could happen. And yeah. then just fortune favours me, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> the, rest, the rest is history, because we can all remember those famous wild card quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> Quarterfinals get absolutely destroyed by Federer. Gor <laughs> hey, Goran Ivanisevic, mate. Mm. Yeah. One Wimbledon as a wild card. Yeah, he yeah but he muddled wasn't through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't he doing drawings for a live podcast three <laughs> weeks before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neil, some audience interaction. Uh, so, Christine, I can't read your surname, uh, tells you your first kiss. Uh, her first kiss was on a trampoline with his family watching. <laughs> uh, what? I mean, we need more information on that. Christine? <laughs> a p p image of the family just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, uh, Christine? How many oh, yeah, tripods yeah, yeah, are we yeah, getting? No, 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 she's there. She's just oh, reluctant oh, to put her hand up. Everyone oh, yeah. point at her. That Bounce into the air, Christine, so we can see you. <laughs> Bounce into the air. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how old were you, Christine? Um, I think I was like 13. 13. Why were all your family watching? No, his family. No, uh, the first question is, why are you on a trampoline? <laughs> <laughs> Surely. I'm not sure. So take us through the incident. We just, it was you know, up and down. On the trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> 6 p.m. tomorrow. Tickets available. <laughs> I've actually sold out and exceeded my comp allocation, John. So um, anyway, good luck with Wiki Races. <laughs> <laughs> so Christine, ta ta take us through it. Yeah, it was just at his house. And then we went outside because his family were inside. And then, you know, I had a first kiss on a trampoline. Were you and bouncing we at the time? His whole family were watching were you, at the window. Were you bouncing? No. <laughs> what do you impressive? You both bounced in from opposite ends. Yeah. Yeah. Kissing <laughs> me there. <laughs> Landed. <laughs> no, one of the family was watching. Those, those two were gifted. <laughs> <laughs> they were filming it for You've Been Framed. <laughs> and uh, how long did it last? Uh, the relationship? Oh, not very long. Oh. By the time they came down. <laughs> 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 Just one kiss and down. <laughs> Uh, I, I went to, um, I drove Ellis, who does my show, our show. <laughs> <laughs> that, me. that is accurate, to be fair. Yeah, that is fair. You do about 8% of the work. Thanks, Carry on, John. Get paid half as much as you did. Um, so, <laughs> that was meant to be funnier than it yeah. turned out to be. 8pm <laughs> assembly rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Sold out, mate. I don't know why that came out in a Scottish accent. Um, so... I was, uh, Ellis' <laughs> Ellis's girlfriend was driving us to Manchester, and I was, Josh, mate, I'm telling you an anecdote Sorry, here. just said, um, brief update, he's currently on Michael Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's absolutely yeah. circling Crosby yeah. here. <laughs> mate, you are closer than you think. Yeah. You are closer than you think. <laughs> yeah. Carry on, John. Look for spouse. <laughs> I'd watch that sitcom every <laughs> Carry on, Terry and June for our times. A Crankies so for our times. Ding so dong. I, 
Ellis's girlfriend was driving, and I had to sit in the front because Ellis gets too angry. <laughs> and we had to stop off at her friend's house. And as we left, her friend's daughter, who was probably about four, was on a trampoline and started to giggle. And we all turned around because she took off all of her clothes. <laughs> so she's bouncing up and down nude on a trampoline. And I don't have kids, so I didn't really know what to say. So I just said, huh, it's the first time I've ever seen a nude child on a trampoline. <laughs> As it, but then it sounded like I was sort of... I was almost like trying to cover for something. <laughs> and I was like, no, I mean, I, it's, I'm just... It's, it's a nice moment. She looks so free. <laughs> oh. oh, God. And it was sort of OK, uh, but uh, we drove away quite quickly. And I said to them in the car, that is genuinely the first time I've ever seen an, a naked child on a trampoline. And at that exact moment, we passed a garden with another naked <laughs> child on a trampoline. And you just, what do you do? You wait your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> you hang out at so many gymnasiums. Yeah. Gymnasia. Um. <laughs> Let it flourish, mate. Let it flourish. <laughs> oh, do you know this fun fact? Chris Ramsey, comedian Chris Ramsey, has invested in a chain of trampolining centres. <laughs> that is absolutely true. I heard that and I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a wind-up. I don't think it was. I mean, uh, we've got two niche. Yeah. Here uh, he is again. <laughs> <laughs> and next. Uh, James Whitby. James Whitby, anywhere? Whitby. Oh, oh, you. <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> Uh, for listeners, James is the one who's already on the stage playing Wiki Racers. Oh, it's a very Whitby heavy show this week. <laughs> uh, Whit Whitby's kind of like the show's wild card in many ways. <laughs> I really hope, uh, first kiss, it's just got two words Michael Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, James, uh, when you were losing your virginity, uh, her parents came home and you had to pretend you were doing pee revision in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Surely biology would have been much better. PE <laughs> revision isn't a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she was, was your first kiss, that woman of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was doing a PE GCSE. And Sounds she... like an absolute winner. Wait, can I, can I just check? You weren't like 37 at the stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she was doing PC, PE GCSE and she heard the door go and she said, quick, just put on your pants and pretend that we're doing press-ups and we're practising for our PUGCSE. I mean, if I anything, that, that is creepy. You had time to put on your entire clothes. <laughs> but then but when, the when her parents got back... Were you made press-up when they walked in the room? Did you, like, get yeah, in position? Because to sort of prove that I was yeah, yeah, dedicated yeah. Buff, to my yeah. PUGCSE. Yeah. But you were doing the press-ups without using your hands or legs at that point. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so then to, to make sure that she was doing her work properly, we had to sort of do laps around the back garden. <laughs> 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 never heard it called that before. <laughs> what was that? What, a back garden? I said never heard it called that before. <laughs> <laughs> Anal. <Wh> uh, <laughs> I'm suddenly regretting inviting my parents along to this. Uh, <laughs> I don't really are there. They've done laps around the back garden oh! before. Oh! I'm talking about PE revision. Don't you understand euphemisms now? <laughs> right. What? One more, Neil. Uh, just Tasha's quite bleak. He said it was like kissing a washing machine. Oh. I'm glad I brought that up. Was it like kissing a washing machine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, the, the obviously, uh, Nish, uh, we haven't we come to you with your uh, your feature on the show. What was yep. your feature? Conspiracy theories. You're a big fan of conspiracy theories. Yes. Not. Believing them? Not a believer in them, just a great fan of them. Okay. What? I don't know why I'm speaking like I've got lines in a bad play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Josh, what would you like to hear <laughs> next? <laughs> so, so, Nish, uh, what, what was your favourite one you ever did for us? Uh, the Saddam Hussein uh, uh, secretly owned a Stargate. <laughs> and I mean, just, no, just the, the thing is, though, that is, a, a, is actually true. Yeah. <laughs> And just to clarify, uh, in that original one, it says a Stargate, brackets, like the movie, Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got for us tonight? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Good evening. Or is it? <laughs> yeah. 
not enough regular <laughs> listeners in that to was do Mrs. the catchphrases. Catch it's the conspiracy theory, Chris Ramsey and the trampoline company. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the conspiracy theory, okay, this is the, uh, just to summarise it, dinosaurs helped build the pyramids. <laughs> so, this is uh, from an article That's that... That's not out of the question, is it? I've only got little arms. <laughs> <laughs> And there goes the first joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Nish. <laughs> okay, here we go. A dinosaurs help build the pyramids, school director says. Far from becoming extinct 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs actually coexisted with the early humans and even helped in the construction of the pyramids. This is the words of Vince Fennec, evangelist pastor and director of the fully licensed, state-approved creationist institution which admits children between 4 and 18. Now, this is a direct quote from him. Of course, the dinosauros. Can, pa- can I just pause you? Um, he's on top gear. <laughs> this guy. I mean, I don't mean that guy. He's on top gear. <laughs> he's reached top gear from Michael Portillo. Matthew, have you ever been on top gear? I'm uh, still waiting for that call. <laughs> Carry on, Nish. I did. Of course, the dinosauros existed. It is mentioned in the book of Job, which I'm assuming is an obscure episode of the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> They were used to help build the pyramids, he says, adding that this latter observation is only, quote, his personal belief and does not form part of the school's curriculum. And the school that he teaches at is in Malta, and it's called the Accelerated Christian Academy, which I'm assuming is just a bunch of guys holding crucifixes running around in the labs. (laughs) Which now, given what Robin said earlier, has taken on a dark, dark turning. Uh, The basic key core of this whole school is that the entire universe was created in 4004 BC, and this is his proof. When man landed on the moon, brackets in 1969, they expected the landing module to sink in a deep layer of dust, but the layer was only a few inches deep. This proves that the universe is still young. To which I say, what? (laughs) (laughs) So this guy teaches at a school, which basically teaches you that the world was invented in 4004 BC, and whilst he doesn't put this on the curriculum, he believes that dinosaurs and man coexisted and dinosaurs were used to help build the pyramids. Wow. Like Jurassic Park. I, I'm not sure what boring director's cut of that movie you watch where they just <laughs> all part like Richard Attenborough going, they all just do construction, spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> We'd come to Neil to see, uh, do you believe in it? Uh, well, he believes in it, so I believe in it. Uh, look, just, 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 just in case this doesn't sell you on this particular man, uh, he actually he gives loads of quotes, and this is one of them. We don't just teach our students about evolution, he continues enthusiastically. We teach them, for example, that abortion is murder, dot, dot, dot. And you can quote me on that, too. Keep it light. <laughs> <laughs> still, still lovely to hear back from dot, dot, dot. Uh, <laughs> playing a massive part in tonight's proceedings. <laughs> Uh, now, the, 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 uh, the final feature, uh, we, we've got, obviously, James A. Custer scrape to come, but um, Nathaniel Metcalf, you, you actually, uh, you, uh, were the, you followed Nish, um, and your feature was uh, quite good. It was called Radio, well, you came up with the title, Neil. Radio Get With The Times. Pretty cool. And, um, and what did your feature involve? My feature involved finding uh, old TV listings and try and find out what was on that week. Pretty cool. <laughs> Should have tuned in when it was live, guys. <laughs> it was good. What was our, our favourite shows that we came across? I, I, I think the favourite episode was when we played Higher or Lower with the quality of guests on TFI oh Friday. Yeah, that was, that was, that was classic. <laughs> that was my favourite game. David Bowie was on the Priory. Can you he believe was. it? Oh, well, there you go. Bit of trivia. Before your time, over. <laughs> <laughs> the drug rehabilitation. <laughs> 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 I really dread to think that people at home play higher or lower with the guests on this show. <laughs> <laughs> lower, lower, <laughs> lower, lower, Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what show have you got for us this week, Nathaniel? Well, this week, I'm not going back that far. I'm going back to 2005, the 17th of November, because I'm a big fan of a music documentary. Oh, yeah, me too. I like them more than I like music. <laughs> <laughs> And one, of, one of the best music documentaries of all time, if anyone saw it. It was only been shown once. It was uh, the music documentary, Take That for the Record. Have you seen oh, that one? Oh, I remember this. This is a brilliant one. They're, they're, all they did all the way through was try and uh, prove that they were, were not squeaky clean. 
So you'd have them going saying things like, yeah, people think we just never had sex. And you go, I don't think anyone thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone thinks the members would take that have never known the touch of a woman. <laughs> it, seems, it seems unlikely to me. My favourite bit in it is when they're, when they're trying to prove like, that they're not, they're quite bad boy, they're trying to prove a bad boy image. They tell us a song that they used to sing on the Take That Tour bus. And it's my favourite bit. And it, the song goes, you can join in afterwards. <laughs> the song goes, We're naughty, we're naughty, we're off our fucking heads. Ah. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Let Eaton flourish. <laughs> Don't like to join in on that? <laughs> no. no. Um, that was when they were on tour with the Crankies. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd sing that. Was this the one where Robbie was not reunited? He was them? not reunited. They all waited for him. They all he waited for him in a hotel room. room. He it's also the up. one where Howard. Um, uh, oh, that's really bleak if I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> Howard, <laughs> there's a bit where Howard's talking about his solo album. Yes, yes. That, that was <laughs> it doesn't get a release. That didn't get a release. <laughs> but it's really, it's really good. Um, didn't get a release. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bleakest documentary of all time. Um, the same week you could have watched Take That for the Record, 17th of November, uh, 2005, you could also have watched that year's Children in Need. Oh, yeah. Which featured... A bit where Terry Wogan explained that if you didn't raise enough money during one segment of the show, that he would perform a new jungle version of his 1978 hit, The Floral Dance. <laughs> Chris Barry from the British Empire <laughs> teams up with the boxer Frank Bruno and Let Loose perform a song written especially for children in need. <laughs> Do you remember Let Loose? Yeah. yeah. Let Loose went to my school, <laughs> and um, just before they broke big with their one hit, Crazy For You, they, they did a concert in our school, and there was a big announcement saying, we're going to do a charity concert with the band Let Loose. This was before they'd even released it. No one knew who they were. And then about, about lunchtime, there was a Tannoy thing saying, all right, guys, you don't actually have to pay money to see Let Loose, but it, you do have to have a ticket. So if you want to get a ticket from the staff room, just come along and get one. Then right at the end of the day, they just said, just turn up. <laughs> just turn up if you want to see Let Loose. Have a quick game of Wiki Races. <laughs> Not that quick, he's still going. What, what are you on now? What are you on now? James is his name, come on. Yeah. Sorry, James. Sorry, James, what are you on now? Whitball. Comedian. Comedian. Oh. You're, you're further away than ever. How did you get to that ever. from Top Gear? I'm well, we'll come to at the end. I'm Some really more struggling. Audience James, I'm going to have a sort of underdog loser vibe in this game, but... Um, I, I could just sort of type it in if you want and sort of get there. No, that's, no, that's okay. not allowed. No. The, no. the game's not searching Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Neil? Uh, da, da, da. Someone's written a really funny story. Where, where have they written that? <laughs> it's like they don't want to give kiss. the copyright <laughs> away. <laughs> oh, Daisy Miles. Tells you first kiss really funny story dash ne never happened. Yeah, I don't know what that is. No. Next, Neil? Playing the Susan Boyle card. <laughs> 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 uh, Lindsay Thompson. So, again, back to things falling on you. Uh, first time I met my husband, he ran oh, into me, knocking me over. Oh. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Next. What's in that pile, if those are still up there? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Actually, let's go to the, the bonus question, which was, uh, have you ever met the oh, Ting yeah. Tings? Um, Julianne. Where's Julianne? Are you, are you here? Anywhere? Julianne. Oh, yeah, she's waving. Uh, so not necessarily meeting the Ting Tings, but you once met a girl called Ting Ting, and she said it was <laughs> Chinese for star. True story. Mm. Is that true? Yes. Very this true. This isn't QI. <laughs> 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 no, it I very much <laughs> isn't. <laughs> Also, surely it's Chinese for star, star. Mm. Oh, I might, might mean like bright star or something. If you ting ting, star, star, bright star, I don't know. Mm. So like we Chinese. have no one who's about the ting tings. Are you sure her <laughs> name was ting ting? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not ting tong, oh. Little Britain series three. We'll miss that. <laughs> miss uh, Eliza, back to Tells the First Kiss. Uh, he had braces and he made my mouth bleed. I think his oh. name was Hugo. Oh. Oh. Where's Eliza? She's bled out. 
We are absolutely hemorrhaging audience members at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The at-home listener does not know that. All right? <laughs> <laughs> people in on it. Oh, no, well, more well, people are coming in, if anything. Then we're going to classic scrape. Uh, Lisa, things that's the bell on you. A bag of sugar in Waitrose. <laughs> We've really run out you of good ones that the one. audience. <laughs> That was the worst audience uh, end, end of the... I mean, have you, have you, oh, actually, uh, you picked up the wrong pile? Vaughn, I broke my collarbone when the two fattest kids in school fell on me. <laughs> That's what we want! This is it! Which one of them did he marry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the same time he did his GCSEs. So Vaughn? Vaughn? Is that his name? Yeah, Vaughn. Maybe he's already left. He's no, over there. no, no, he's right up there. He's right there. Vaughn? Yeah. What happened? Oh, cool. <laughs> just what you're right. Well done, Vaughan. You just saved that bit, so well done. Yeah. Well done. James A. Caster, classic scrape. Hello. Uh, huh? Oh, Joe Lysett. Oh, Joe Lysett. Is Lysett here? Yeah, he just sat on the stairs very loosely. Hi, Joe. Good morning, Josh. <laughs> Good morning, listener. Hey. Oh, his catchphrase, you fucking clap. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Joe Lysett, who's been Woo! doing the gig. Hello. What Still the fuck is that coat? Oh, it's covered in water. I thought you were wearing no, no, like. No, it's. Um, I got it in the Zara sale. <laughs> it's, it's £15, pounds and feel it. It's ever so shit at getting rain off here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, I don't Joe. really. Because I, what I used to do on your show is I used to ring in, uh, or you would ring me and I would be drunk. And. <laughs> So I can this was a breakfast about show, that. Joe. What happened? And, um, well, because it was normally on a Saturday morning when you rang me. And you were drunk. And I was drunk from the night before. Oh. And it would, it would normally be the call that would ring me, that would wake me, and I would have to talk about the, uh, the biggest news story of the week, unless it was at all difficult to talk about comedically, <laughs> in which case it would not be the biggest news story of the week <laughs> and something adjacent. So <laughs> the week when Margaret Thatcher was on, we didn't... Was on? Not was on. <laughs> On her <laughs> grave. Um, <laughs> they left her on top of it. Being driven round in one of those coffins on wheels. <laughs> 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 Lovely. Can Good I just in. say, I like how long it's taking you to get from comedian to Matt Crosby. <laughs> You've done it. You've done it. Well, we'll come to that. Um, yes, and so I forgot what the brief was. So I literally turned up, and I'm just Googling what the biggest news story of the week is, but 3G is ever so inferior in here. It's the uh, Bangkok bomb. <laughs> <laughs> the big news story this week. <laughs> Mo Farah wins 10,000 <laughs> metres. Well done to the last. And then you would ask me questions about it, wouldn't yep, you? And I would go. Uh, well, he made it six global distance titles in a row, Josh. Did this used to happen? <laughs> yes. And then what happened was you, um, you then texted me the one week and said, oh, Joe, we're changing the direction of the show. And I didn't do it again. No, but we did that to everyone. everyone no, but that's because this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> because I put zero work into it. Yeah, but no. I'm really happy to be here. And you're here for James A. Caster's Scrape. James, yes, great. each uh, week uh, you would bring us a story of a scrape you'd got into. Yes. Hello. I don't have a catchphrase. Very old. know it anyway. I don't think <laughs> anyone has ever heard this show before. <laughs> um, I... Th this is... This scrapes like when I was... This is, I was five, I think. Five years old in primary school. And um, my school didn't have... Did anyone else... No, I've never met anyone else who's had this as a kid. Anyone else have a primary school that didn't have hand dryers or paper towels and you had to bring in your own towel? <laughs> I mean, I'm obviously out. <laughs> <laughs> or, or had someone bring it in for you, eh? Not since the 60s. Oh, Jeeves? Um, <laughs> Jeeves? Jeeves, that's a cliched name, isn't it? It's lazy, sorry, mate. What was the name of your home help, either? Yeah, what was the name of your home help? No? Can we talk about trains again? Uh, just so you know, <laughs> I Which genuinely end? once got lost in your house. No. no. <laughs> That's how you became friends, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you and Alcester arrange to meet at the front of his house? <laughs> <laughs> In the labyrinth, Josh had drunk too, 
t- too much of my father's port. So you weren't. <laughs> j- j- I did get in trouble for drinking too much of your father's port. Yeah. You did that gig as well. Josh and James did a gig in my local village and Joe had to go back to Birmingham. But Josh came back to my house and got drunk with my dad on port. I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. Good guy, though. I drove home drunk and did the ex offender show the next morning. <laughs> no, and the news was not. drunk comedian mows down 12. <laughs> It was a great week that week <laughs> for, the, uh, for the news. Well, James. Um, it's been our own towel to dry our hands. That was just what we did. I thought it was normal. Like, I didn't discover until I was an adult and at a party when I was in my 20s. And I. Uh, and you got some fucking great party yeah. chat, mate. <laughs> hey, guys, let's kick this off. Who he had to bring towels into school? <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was literally that. It was literally, I thought, I said, I said like, in a conversation, yeah, like when you had to bring your towel into school. <laughs> and, 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 and everyone go, uh, none of us did that. <laughs> go, well, I'm going home. Uh, um, I'm taking my towel with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and, uh, I, um, one day, I forgot my towel. Went to school, forgot my towel, went to the toilet, came out, washed my hands, soaked them up. Why did you do it in that order? <laughs> Traditionally, the soap is a pre-wash. Hey, <laughs> Caster, you absolute cleaning maverick. I, mean, I couldn't even remember my towel dish. I didn't know how to wash my hands. <laughs> soaked them up. Soapy hands. And then... Realised I'd left my towel at home. Walked into the, the cloakroom, and there's only one kid in there who's called you'd Simon. You've forgotten your cloak as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 cloak, good God. Simon was sitting there, who was like quite a brainy kid, quite a good kid. And I didn't know what to do, so I said, Simon, who don't you like in our class? Who's the kid you don't like the most? How old were you at this point? Five? <laughs> Five? Pretty brave thing. I I said, he didn't want to. He said Siobhan. Yeah. Fair enough, she's unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't like Siobhan. So I found this is the first time I was ever naughty. Just weird, I, I don't know if you remember the first time you were ever naughty, but like there's that. I d- didn't even know the concept of naughtiness and discovered it myself when I'd forgotten my towel and backed into a corner. So I found Siobhan's coat on the coat hooks. Dried my hands Oof. on the coat. Considering you oh. soaped them after washing as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in the wrong order. He was loving it. Simon clapping like a like a lord. Mm. <laughs> Being entertained, really happy that Siobhan's coat was getting uh, a bit, a bit sort of higher up. Yeah. <laughs> <It's high>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm lord, enjoying this. They're not actually allowed to clap. I would have thought you'd know that I though. Lords aren't allowed to clap. No, you're not allowed to clap in the Houses of Parliament, as the SNP found out. It did. I'm not going to express an opinion on that, given (laughs) where we are. (laughs) Good luck to them, in a way. (laughs) (laughs) So you're drying your hands on this woman's towel. (laughs) Can I just say, one person applauded at the back, and I believe that was... uh, Yeah, it's Alex Salmond. Carry on. (laughs) (laughs) All right, give it up, (laughs) Brad. Went for lunch, dry hands. <laughs> Cold heart. Cold heart. <laughs> for lunch. Afternoon registration. Mrs. Andrews says, okay, everyone. Siobhan's very upset. Someone in this class dried their hands on her coat <laughs> and there's soapy, streaky, soapy hand marks <laughs> all over the coat. <laughs> Who did this? And then Simon slowly raised his hand into the air. His soapy hand. (laughs) Still dripping. When it was James Acaster. I was saying to him, I said to him, you said she was your least favourite person in the school. And he went, second least (laughs) favourite. And he's here tonight. I brought him with me. Wow. Do we know what's happened to him? No, I don't know what, what's happened to Simon. I have no idea. I mean, I'd assume jail, having to bring his own towel. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, how did it, po- did she, um, 
I had to I had to wash the coat, uh, and I remember washing the coat and really crying, so I, I'd never felt so bad in my life. And I remember her coming over and saying, "Thank you for washing the coat," which made me feel even worse. Aww. Essentially, uh, you'd already washed yeah. the coat the first time. <laughs> yeah, I love it really. It's just a kind of rinse cycle. Yeah. At what age did you stop putting soap on your hands after you'd washed them? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, to be honest, always until I misspoke earlier. Um, <laughs> 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 it's weird how there are things that you don't know are wrong until someone goes, what the hell are you doing there? Because no one it's tells you. It's a trampoline you. story. Again. No. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know it was weird to keep a log of how many <laughs> naked children you saw. Can I, can I say something that can't go on the podcast? Uh, well, there's also two other edits I'd like to make. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, please. Um, Don't no. cut me again. <laughs> <laughs> I. Is anyone recording this? Yeah, it's yes, being recorded. XFM. <laughs> no, yeah, but, but like people who might put it on the internet. They weren't no, until you said that. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you all after. John, Don't John, I told it. you that in confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I would say up until about three years ago. I thought a pony was just a baby horse. <laughs> <laughs> Up until about three seconds ago, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Is that not the case? Different thing. What? Different thing. What's a mule? This changes everything. I've got to update my Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, so that brings us to, to the Wikipedia end. Uh, uh, Neil, uh, Ivo, uh, we, have you reached oh, the uh, Wikipedia? Oh, yeah, I got there in the end, yeah. So, shall we have Ivo first? Yes, all right. The then. tension won't be massive, will it? Will it? Because ja we know that James went behind Michael Portillo and Top Gear. Yeah, uh, we could look, blast through mine because it's a, you know, if it's anything. Where were we efficient. linking from? Sorry, oh, sorry uh, from uh, Lady Sovereign to Matthew Crosby. Okay, okay let's, let's have it. Do have ideas? Um, well, I've played this a few times, so I've, I've started to learn that programs like Celebrity Big Brother are a very good conduit. Um, so, <laughs> and Lady Sovereign was on it, um, Series Seven, apparently. The big one. That was you had that written down before the show started. Oh yeah, he did it before the show, so that he oh, did it before the show started. Oh, I so see. That I okay. 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 But there oh, wasn't right. a judicator present like the lottery. Mm. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Come on, I vote. Run so us I'd be, it. So I'd be free for bants in the live arena, um, <laughs> <laughs> and not on Wikipedia, because we all see James has been very restrained. Um, <laughs> so just, it just you know you can't multitask this show. So Lady Sovereign was on Celebrity Big Brother Seven. Uh, and so you're thinking, how can I get to comedy from there? Not via Portillo. I, I wish I'd thought of Portillo in a way, <laughs> but I didn't. So I went uh, Celebrity Big Brother 7, Celebrity Big Brother, uh, Jack D, winner of the first ever. Don't yawn, James. Sorry, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Your scrape was quite hesitant as well, but I was alert. Fuck's <laughs> 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 sake. Busting for a piss as well. Um, uh, Celebrity Big Brother, winner of the first Celebrity Big Brother is Jack D. Um, Jack D also winner of the Perry Award, now Foster's uh, list of Perry Award winners, uh, which also includes nominees, Pappies, Matthew Crosby. So there it's, we uh, go. There eight. We go. Eight. Eight. Harry Moose. Very eight. impressive. Eight. James, would you like me to, to, would you like to run us through, please? It, it's more than eight. Well, Cheers for this. helping the tension. <laughs> <laughs> Run us through, James. Portillo famously nominated for the Perrier Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Lost out to Frank Skinner. <laughs> uh, so it starts off with Lady Sovereign. And yep, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not his first rodeo. <laughs> Co controversially to Michael Portillo. What? Uh, he, sorry, hang on. He, what? He's, he's, he's on the page. He's on Why the is he on the he's page? He's on Lady Sovereign. He, he presented something or other. I wasn't reading, I was just looking. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check all these as we go. Lady Sovereign to Michael Portello, which I would say is a questionable link. I was panicking at that point. We'd well, only made one move. It was, <laughs> 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 it it was, it was <laughs> Ivo Graham tickets. Ivo Graham tickets. <laughs> it, it was five minutes in and I'd not okay. done anything. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, then Peter House in Cambridge. Um, What's Peter House? Pe Peter is, is or a, who is he? A, no, Peter, lovely college. Peter House is, is it's a, a college. It's a it? place. Mm. That's college in Cambridge, yeah. Yep. Uh, you were hoping Matthew was better educated <laughs> than he is. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Unless it's at University of Kent Canterbury, you are shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Engl <laughs> England, 
uh, Channel 4. England? You went to England? <laughs> <laughs> Look, England gives me a broader spectrum. That's true, it does. Yeah. I've been were there. you hoping they were going to say, <laughs> England includes a lot of things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, <coughs> yeah. Currency is the pound. Yeah. Notable <laughs> alumni of I, England I include can't be Matthew yeah. Crosby. <laughs> List of people from England. <laughs> <laughs> the census. Currency, the sovereign. Back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so England to uh, England to Channel Four, Channel yep. Four to BBC, BBC to BBC Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so close, mate. So close. One off. <laughs> uh, BBC Two to Top Gear. Oh. Uh, <laughs> What was that move? <laughs> hey, I was a star in a reasonably priced car, so uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't. You were the, I, you I were thought the stick, you might have known someone who was, and it yeah, might but that said, wouldn't be on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> I thought it might be in their Wikipedia page that they're friends with Matthew Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> who do you know who's a star? Who do you know who's a star, mate? Reasonably priced star. What's it? <laughs> <laughs> you know someone who's a star in a reasonably. No, I thought I thought he might know someone. Who's oh, a star. okay. Sorry. I right. don't. I. I then made a bit of an error, went back to BBC Two. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere I have never been. <laughs> Top Gear was leading me nowhere. Uh, and Mot the Week. Nope, not that either. No, no, no. But then Russell Howard's Good News. Nope, not either. No, 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 no. no. But th then Comedian. I'm going broad again. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that back quite, to the world. Yeah, quite, yeah, the world. Maybe he's there. It's quite depressing because it moves into the next day. Because it started on Saturday evening, and then it goes into... <laughs> <laughs> the first ever two-day game of wiki races. <laughs> it started in Saturday evening and then carries on into this morning. So then, it, then from Comedian to Edinburgh Fringe Festival, uh, yep, then brother. Leicester Comedy Festival... And oh, what?! <laughs> 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 But fr I, which I have done, yes. Yeah. Yeah. From there, it goes to Matthew Crosby. Hey! 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 Hi there, Graham. You've protected your two tickets. How many moves? I mean, we don't even what, need to it worth it. Done, though. But you're you're going to be there on stage tomorrow with two empty seats on the front thinking, was it worth yeah. it? How the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Thinking to myself, how the uh, fuck do I get on the Leicester Comedy Festival Wikipedia page? <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I win the tickets then? I'd love you to come. Uh, no, I've, I've seen it already, but uh, Mum and Dad, do you want to see it? Cool, great. Oh, it's <laughs> Poor James. It's a fantastic <laughs> show. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, I'd, Joe. Love, I'd love James to come. And, and to finish it off, um, uh, thank you very much for James. Round of applause for James. Thank you. Um, now, uh, to end the show, uh, Tom Neenan, you have drawn the show. Yes. Yeah. Object, whatever you don't like. No, that's all right. Put it right in the middle, Neenan. Right, 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 right in the front. Spotlight. I'll edit this out. <laughs> this is gold. Oh, yeah, we need to oh, turn. Oh, yeah, we need to be able to see this. Here we go. Okay, everyone get, everyone get ready. Okay. Bearing in mind, my, my, I, I started really... Now, Tom Neenan, uh, what is your qualification for this? Uh, Runner-up Young Cartoonist of the Year 2007. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, so we start. Uh, always not neatly a, not a drawing. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was runner up. <laughs> <laughs> but you did win a young calligrapher of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Just neatly write the title and the date and underline yep. it. That's I do, do that with all my work. Just to point out, XFM step. should be all in capitals. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now we crack on. Right. This is the comedy x-ray of that man there. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you can see at what stage his bladder, uh, how good a show needs to be for him to stay in a show. So, <laughs> so for his bladder to be that full, the show has to be unmissable five stars. <laughs> uh, then for that full, four stars be good, good, meh. And university improv is. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, Just so you know, Tom and I used to be in a university improv yep. group together. Oh yeah, and we were shit. So uh, that <laughs> is my. I couldn't quite see you. I'm sorry, sir. Um, is that a fair representation of a squirrel falling on your head? <laughs> Either that, or it's an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm directed by Salvador Dali. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and then I was too busy trying to get a likeness, uh, so I, I, I didn't really hear the other woman's explanation of what happened to her, and I just heard she was half in a boot. So... <laughs> Sure. Um, okay, here we go. Um, right. <laughs> little, little Paul Daniels there on his bar stool. Uh, <laughs> winning an award for political satire because of that amazing white yeah. flag joke that he did um, <laughs> that blew everyone's minds. Uh, then they're in the hotel. Coming from one room in the hotel is horrific sex noises. That's the uh, crankies having a threesome. And just off of the screen is uh, somebody complains to the waiter, waiter, this cottage cheese is off. <laughs> um, <laughs> I liked it. What's this? Oh yeah, this didn't work. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I became obsessed with John Robbins' uh, the ranking of commendations that he had, where 10 commendations equaled a head of year commendation. No, 100 commendations equaled a head of year commendation. Is that right? Uh, ye, uh, no, a ten for a head of year, and then and then uh, t uh, five head of years for a head teacher. Like I said, it didn't work. But that's the. Uh, Nor did the whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then I thought maybe it'd be a deluxe commendation, and then sixteen of those makers makes a suplex commendation. Like <laughs> I say, that got confusing. So instead, what I tried to do is do the Eton coat of arms, mm. uh, which I don't know if you know. The Eton coat of arms is made up of four images of men telling different things that they went to Eton. <laughs> uh, in this coat of arms, it's a man telling his friend, a man telling a bird, a man telling a kettle, and a man telling his own reflection. Um, and uh, you got the, uh, the actual motto of Eton wrong, because the motto of Eton is, I went to Eton. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this, I, I, I sort of doubled down on this one because originally we were talking about trampolines and seeing naked children on trampolines and I thought, have you ever seen a naked child on a bouncy castle? And I was going to label this the naked child bouncy... I crossed that out, because uh, out of context. Um, and instead I speculated that maybe with his new trampoline empire, this is where Chris Ramsey lives now. Um, <laughs> in Ramsey Castle. And... Oh yeah, lots going on here. Um, okay. For starters, <laughs> uh, Nish mentioned that uh, Saddam Hussein may have had access to a Stargate, uh, which then I thought maybe if we extended that, maybe Robert Mugabe owns Jumanji. <laughs> <laughs> um. uh, you do know what colour Robert Mugabe is, don't you? <laughs> he doesn't see colour, mate. He's not like the rest of you cunts. <laughs> That looks actually, but that top left one looks as good as a political cartoon. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, We're just damning with faint praise. <laughs> <laughs> um, then that's, uh, yeah, this, is, this isn't good. Uh, this is a dinosaur who's made the pyramids, and of course the dinosaurs <laughs> made the pyramids because they worship the god Ra. Oh, um, <laughs> it requires uh, a pretty intimate knowledge of yeah. Egyptian theology. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was just another Eton joke, <laughs> saying Ra. <laughs> <laughs> And this one takes a lot of explaining. I got really upset about the idea of Howard Donald uh, not selling any of his albums, so I thought I'd draw Donald Duck surrounded by lots of unsold albums, then realised I'd drawn Daffy Duck surrounded by loads of <laughs> unsold albums. You do albums. know what colour Donald Duck is, don't you? <laughs> <sighs> See previous. <laughs> and then I just wrote, oh shit, because I got the wrong duck. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> she wasn't... <laughs> She wasn't very popular at school, was she, Siobhan? Um, <laughs> so this is her yearbook for when she was leaving school. No one signed it. She wasn't very popular, but what's ACAST have been up to? <laughs> um, his dirty handprints all over her yearbook. <laughs> and that is the end. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for waiting in the rain. Uh, can we have a round of applause for all of our guests tonight? Thank you Neil Nathaniel Umar, Tom Needham, and thank you to James and all of you that contributed. Cheers. Good night, folks.